Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, we're talking about the 2018 NFL Draft Class, specifically the Miami Dolphins. Uh, so in this video, we're going to recap the Miami Dolphins Draft Class uh, with an eye for every single draft pick based on production and athleticism analytics and if you're new to the channel and you're new to the work that i do all terms and definitions will be in the description so if you're not familiar with what production data is athleticism data or any of the other work that i do you can just get that information in the description in many ways this video is essentially going to give you an idea of what the potential success of the players that the Miami Dolphins selected are based on the data over the course of many, many, many draft classes. And with all that stuff out of the way, let's start with the first pick of the draft, which is of course Minka Fitzpatrick, uh, defensive safety slash cornerback out of Alabama. Uh, when you look at his data as a cornerback, uh, he had a 79.98 solo tackle score and a 64.67 pass deflection score. Based on the data since the 1989 NFL Draft class, pretty much hits above the average solo tackle market share score for a all-pro uh, cornerback, but doesn't quite hit above the average pass deflection score for an all-pro or even Pro Bowl uh, cornerback. Um, uh, if he plays the safety position, this is kind of what his production looks like at the safety spot. 54.33 uh, in terms of solo tackle, 93.74 uh, in terms of interception, and, and uh, 92.83 in terms of pass deflection. Uh, when you look at him as a, uh, as a safety, uh, he looks closer to a starter to pro bowler. He basically has pro bowl level interception to pass deflection data to a certain extent, but his solo tackle data is the only thing that kind of drags him down a bit because he is below what the average solo tackle score is for a all pro safety, pro bowl safety, and starter safety since 1980. Nine. Um, so this is the only real issue with Mika Fitzpatrick is that his production looks better as a cornerback in terms of projection than it does a safety. And this, of course, is the bottom and thresholds when it comes to that position, uh, you know, of, uh, of uh, safety. But he has good athleticism traits. So when you look at him as a cornerback, he had a 61.74 explosive lower body strength score and an 84.85 speed score. All those marks pretty much hit. Uh, Pro Bowl potential in terms of his athleticism traits at the cornerback spot. Um, when you look at him at the safety spot, he has Pro Bowl potential there as well. Um, so ultimately, when you're looking at Mika Fitzpatrick, this is a guy that does have a pretty good shot to become a successful NFL player. It's just there is a little bit of concern about if he has a chance to become an elite player um, because he looks more so like a guy that, have, that would have a better chance of becoming a multiple Pro Bowl cornerback as a cornerback than as a safety. Um, ultimately, we'll see what happens with the Miami Dolphins with this pick, but I do think it's a it's a decent pick in terms of betting on a guy that has a good chance to be a successful NFL player. But there are some question marks in terms of how much upside this guy truly has because of some of the inconsistencies with his production. Then, of course, we get Mike Jacecki, uh tied in out of Penn State. We look at his production data at a 76.62. Market share production score, which basically hits above the all-pro threshold and pro bowl threshold and even starter threshold in terms of the bottom and threshold of the position. Uh, when you look at the averages, uh, the average all-pro score, average pro bowl score, and average starter score, he pretty much is above the starter average and he's in between a pro bowler to starter when it comes to his, uh, uh, his uh, production data. When you get to his athleticism test, testing, uh, he was the most athletic tight end in this draft class. 98.40 in terms of explosiveness, 91.60 in terms of speed, and 97.57 in terms of flexibility for his size. Pretty much hits every single threshold you want in terms of all pro to purple potential. And in many ways, he was the best testing tight end in this draft class when you look at it through the eyes of athleticism and production data. Then, of course, you get to Jerome Baker, linebacker out of Ohio State. His production data, 66.89 out of 100 in terms of his solo tackle data. Doesn't quite hit the all-pro threshold or pro bowl threshold, but does hit above the starter threshold. Um, only big question marks with him is that the, the average uh, production score for a long-term starting linebacker since 1989 is 79.20 out of 100. And Baker is a little bit below that. But the reason why you drafted Baker, at least based on the data, a good assumption, 
is his athleticism traits. Very athletic, 77.76 in terms of explosive lower body strength score, 87.76 in terms of speed, and 90.03 in terms of flexibility for his size. Pretty much has Pro Bowl athleticism traits when you look at it on paper. Um, and I think this is this is a guy that he may not end up becoming a Pro Bowl or All-Pro player, but he does have a very good shot to become a long-term starter because of his athleticism traits and because of at least being somewhat productive. He at least was above average productive. Um, I don't think you're looking at a guy that has a chance to become elite because of his production data, but he is someone that I think can become a long-term starting uh, linebacker for you guys. You to get to Durham Smythe, uh, tight end out of Notre Dame. Uh, when you get to his production data, 43.10 out of 100, does not hit the All-Pro threshold. It's kind of in between All-Pro to Pro Bowl in terms of bottom and threshold. Um, but his big issue is really his production. Uh, when you look at the averages in terms of all-pro potential, pro-bowl potential, and starter potential, well below what those averages are. And when you get to his athleticism traits, 21.85 in terms of explosiveness, 40.65 in terms of speed, and 65.17 in terms of flexibility for his size. Doesn't hit all-pro to pro-bowl potential in terms of his athleticism traits. He does have a chance to potentially be a long-term starting tight end, but this is not a guy that I would say ever becomes like a multiple all-pro to pro bowl type tight end. Essentially, this is not a guy that you would want to draft in your fantasy football circles, if that makes any sense. Uh, then, of course, you get to Kalen Ballage, running back at Arizona State. Uh, when you get to his uh, production data, 48.31 out of 100. Um, doesn't hit the all-pro threshold, five-time pro bowl threshold, or three-time pro bowl threshold, uh, which is where the majority of pro bowlers and all-pro pro, pro, uh, all running backs typically perform. And when you look at the averages of the position, this kind of makes it a little bit worse. Average All-Pro score is about 90.98. Average Pro Bowl and starter score is about 75-ish for both those players. So Kellen Ballage, in many ways, production-wise, is just kind of iffy. Uh, but the reason why you're buying him is because of his athleticism traits. 71.30 in terms of explosiveness, 91.03 in terms of speed, and 85 in terms of flexibility for his size. Pretty much has two... All pro slash pro bowl potential athleticism traits in terms of speed and flexibility. This guy doesn't have a very high likelihood to become a multiple all pro slash pro bowl running back or even a long term starting running back because of his production data. But he has a chance to become an outlier based on his athleticism traits. So if he becomes an outlier, it will be because of his athleticism traits. But if he doesn't, then he just doesn't. So, I mean, the bottom line is when it comes to Kalen Ballage is he's just a guy that could become a starter, could become a, a high-quality running back, or he could also just become kind of an eh running back because of some of his issues in terms of production. Then, of course, we get to Cornell Armstrong, cornerback out of Southern Miss. Um, when you get to his production data, 9.49 in terms of solo tackle data, 31.61 in terms of pass deflection data. Does not hit the bottom and threshold in terms of solo tackle data for a pro bowler or all pro cornerback. So, so high quality outcomes are pretty much off the table when it comes to Cornell Armstrong. And his pass deflection data is very, very low as well when you look at the averages at the position. Uh, athleticism is why I think you drafted him. Uh, 80.22 in terms of explosiveness, 74.97 in terms of speed, and 58 in terms of flexibility for his size. Does not quite have pro bowl athleticism traits for his size. But definitely has above average athleticism traits. And I do think there is a chance that he could become a, a pretty solid backup and maybe fringe starter if you develop him. So I, I very unlikely that he becomes a long-term starter to pro and, and very like honestly all pro slash pro bowl outcomes is just really un, like that would be very um very unlikely. But definitely a guy that has athleticism traits where you could possibly get something um, if you do, if you uh, end up developing him. So of course we get to Quentin Poling, linebacker out of Ohio. Production data similar to Jerome Baker, 69.44 in terms of solo tackle data. Doesn't quite hit the all-pro threshold or pro bowl threshold. But does hit at least above the starter threshold, kind of below the starter average of 79.20. But the reason you drafted him is honestly because of his athleticism traits. 94.60 in terms of explosiveness, 89.18 in terms of speed, and 93.20 in terms of flexibility for his size. Another guy very similar to Baker, but more athletic. And honestly, when you look at him, he's just a guy that you hope that the athletic upside kind of carries him a bit. Um, so again, a guy that 
very unlikely he gets all pro says pro bowl potential because there's never been an all pro says pro bowl linebacker to not hit at least a 77 or higher in terms of solo tackle data but definitely somebody that has athleticism traits that could carry his profile into the nfl level and then lastly we get jason sanders uh, place kicker out of new mexico state um, based on his production score which basically is his field goal percentage based on every single field goal percentage since 2001 in college uh, he had a 77.32 out of 100 i'm not trying to hate on this pick too much but there were many many different place kickers that were better than jason sanders in this draft class mike badgley drew brown daniel carlson eddie panero uh, like there, there's just a lot of guys that just had much better field goal percentages so um jason sanders just doesn't make a whole lot of sense um, when you look at just what he was able to do in his career at new mexico state so um, that's the only pick that I think is doesn't make a lot of sense that you would draft a kicker and you would also draft a kicker who doesn't really have great college data. Overall, when you look at the Miami Dolphins draft class, I think it's a pretty solid draft class. I do understand where they're going with this class. I mean, when you look at it, they're, they're drafting athletes. Mika Fitzpatrick is above average athleticism. Mike Jasicki is, is the most athletic tight end in this class. Jerome Baker is very athletic. Kalen Ballage is very athletic. Cornell Armstrong is very athletic. Quentin Poling is very athletic. So I do understand where you're going. I don't think that many of the players in this class have really, really high quality outcomes except for Minka and Jasicki. But it's not really that bad of a class. I do think that there's a lot of players that have a good chance to become successful players. I don't think it's the worst draft class in this particular draft class. Um, but there are a couple picks here and there like Cornell Armstrong and Jason Sanders, uh, where you or, or even Durham, where you kind of are wondering, you know, wh where are we going here? You know, what are we trying to do here? And of course, uh, my name is James Coburn. You can find my other work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Gymmetrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Uh, share this video as well with anybody that you know. Hit that notification button so you're always reminded when another video of mine drops, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace!